Hello everyone. I want to talk about the experience of the elite English language media in covering international affairs these last five years. When Trump, Brexit and populism came along, we initially mishandled them, especially Trump. When he announced his candidacy in 2015 by talking about Mexican rapists, we journalists were caught unawares. We didn't know how to handle a politician who just made unsubstantiated claims or lies all the time. Historically, politicians in democratic countries had used convoluted, weasley language to muddy the truth. They didn't lie outright. Think of Bill Clinton saying during the Lewinsky affair, it depends upon what the meaning of is is. So with Trump, we initially just repeated his claims. We said, well, the candidate is saying that there are Mexican rapists coming in. We should have said there evidence there is suggests that undocumented immigrants commit crimes at a lower rate than native-born Americans and then just stop repeating the lies. But in part, letting lies pass was lazy journalism. Journalism has traditionally privileged access over accuracy. And also, stories about Trump were very well read. We now have this dangerous piece of knowledge that we didn't have in the print era. We know exactly what readers read, even how far down an article they read, because they're reading online. And we have found out that they like stories that deal with identity in some ways, that give them an identity. So articles about Trump, Brexit, Black Lives Matter, whether you approve or oppose those things, they help clarify your identity so people read them. An article about, you know, the nuances of Joe Biden's climate policy, it doesn't have that identity appeal, so it will be less well read. And so elite media fixated on Trump for years, and he drove the news agenda. And once the media are in a position of debating whether a falsehood is true, truth has already lost, because post-lie fact-checking rarely has the impact of the original lie. And with Brexit too, journalists found themselves repeating the Leave campaigns, in particular Leave campaigns claims that were not true, such as that the UK was sending £350 million a week to Brussels. We disputed the claim, but we kept repeating it. Selfishly, though, the elite media during these years have boomed. The Financial Times a couple of years ago surpassed 1 million paying subscribers, which is the most in the newspaper's 133-year history. Other Rivals like the Washington Post, The Guardian, The New Yorker, The Atlantic Monthly, elite publications have also hit new all-time records. The New York Times now has nearly 5 million paying subscribers just for its news products, which is four, four times the highest it ever achieved in print in 1994. So what you see is that while smaller and local newspapers are, are failing and newspapers in smaller languages, even French, I live in France, I see that, cannot reach an international audience. The elite English language newspapers are actually becoming global newspapers. And I think one thing that's going on is that at a time when liberal readers find their identity under threat, they embrace their newspaper not just as a source of information, but a source of identity. One man introduced himself to me as a Financial Times economist liberal. They see the newspaper increasingly as a club of with ideas that match their own. And so they don't like it when their publication seems to show sympathy for the other side's views, when the Times say the New York Times sympathetically covers Republican positions. New York Times readers will sometimes get angry because they feel they belong to a club. You see this very strongly with The Guardian. Guardian readers saved the newspaper with their donations. They don't feel like mere readers. They are members. And simultaneously, illiberal readers are leaving our clubs. So the Financial Times and The Economist have lost a lot of Trump-supporting, Brexit-supporting readers, is my impression. They think we're just lying now, and they have walked out on us. So our readerships have become more homogenous in the Trump era. Happily, I think we've learned during this era how to cover lies. It's taken too long, but you see since November, since the election in the US, that media have stopped repeating Trump's lies about election fraud. They don't specify his claims in detail and take them seriously. They just say the president repeated his baseless claims. And I think what's happening too late is that newspapers are adopting a kind of legal scientific model of truth. You can't walk into a law court and just make unsubstantiated claims without any evidence. You can't do that in a scientific journal either. And I think newspapers are starting to function that way too. You cannot come into our pages and make claims without any evidence that 
I don't know, vaccines don't work or climate change doesn't exist. We no longer print that kind of stuff. And so I think the new journalistic approach is not so much speak truth to power, it's force power to speak truth to us. I hope we'll still cover populist policies even-handedly, so a politician can come into our pages and advocate for Brexit or for a border wall, but they just can't do so using lies anymore. I'm also hoping that elite media will increasingly use observations from participants on the ground rather than just politicians giving their spin. So with Brexit, I want to hear from lorry drivers, trade negotiators, exporters, and not so much from politicians who obviously have an axe to grind. Now, if we can follow the legal scientific approach, it might help stop the next Trump, because if journalists deny airtime to lies, it will incentivize politicians to tell the truth, and that could increase trust in both of our professions. Lastly, my unconfident predictions for what comes next in the um, Biden era, let's say. I think politics is going to become more boring, less about identity, less polarizing, and so it will become less interesting to many readers. Some of them will peel off. Our massive circulations will probably decline somewhat. On the other hand, I think debate is going to become healthier than it's been these last five years. Thank you very much.